welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Now today, I'm going to say a big thank you for me hitting 30,000 subscribers. I'm going to state the obvious, I couldn't do it without you guys. And in honor of that, I'm going to do a little giveaway. Please stick around until the end of the video for your chance to win a pretty cool watch. But of course, today I wanted to talk about five things I love about the Omega Speedmaster. Now the Love and Hate series is something I've done for a while, where I do a video of five things I love, so stick around about five things I hate about the Omega Seamaster. That should be coming around uh, quite soon, so don't forget to subscribe. Wristwatch check, obviously I'm wearing the Omega Seamaster, sorry, Speedmaster, Chronograph Hasselite Crystal Limited Edition Apollo 14. This is a pretty rare one uh, that I got a little while ago. You could only buy this if you bought the whole missions set. But I'm going to be talking about the Omega Speedmaster in general and specifically five things I love about it. So the first thing I love is the size. Now, I'm a pretty big guy, obviously. This is a 42 millimeter watch. I wear a lot of 44 millimeter Panerais, but this watch wears just fine. And it's a little weird because it doesn't wear like a big 42, it wears really well on me, but there's guys with much smaller uh, wrists that can pull it off as well. It's almost like a chameleon. It fits every wrist size, or at least pretty close to every wrist size, whether you're closer to an eight inch wrist like me, or you're smaller to like a six and a half inch wrist. It just looks substantial, it feels right, and it, it just suits many different wrist sizes. There's not many watches that can do that. The, the, the Rolex Submariner, particularly the pre-ceramic, is also pretty good at that. The second thing I love is the Hesselite Crystal. Now, a beautiful thing is when you buy an Omega, you can get it with Hesselite, which is their fancy word for plastic, or you can get it with a Sapphire Crystal. So that's another beautiful thing. You can choose either or. But I love the Hesselite Crystal because for lack of a better word, it's so charming. I mean, I've got a couple of scuffs on it, which I like. It gives it that used vintage look, but they can be polished out very, very quickly with a little bit of poly watch. It has this kind of domed look to it, and it has this cloudy ring around the outside. Very hard to see on camera, but that is a signature look of Hesselite crystals. So I love the fact that you can choose both Sapphire and Hesselite, but I particularly like the Hesselite on mine because it gives it that kind of vintage feeling. Obviously, I'm not an astronaut. I'm never going to be an astronaut. But it's part of the Moonwatch look, and I kind of love that. Number three, and talking about things I love in history and, and, you know, astronauts, I love the history of the watch. The first watch worn on the moon, uh, the watch of the Apollo space program, uh, you know, that's, it's manually wound, it's got tessellite crystal, so it doesn't shatter in space should something happen. It's just a watch that's, you know, full of history, and it's kind of romantic to me. Yesterday I was watching the old Tom Hanks movie Apollo 14, and they did a really good job. Everybody in that movie, uh, whether it was Tom Hanks or any of the other uh, characters, were all wearing speedies, and period correct ones, if I may add, and it just made it extra special. Now, obviously, I'm not an astronaut, nor am I that infatuated with the space program, but a watch that's accomplished as much as the Speedmaster is certainly an icon, and that's one of the many reasons I love it. Number four is the movement. Now, this is also going to be on the hate list uh, for different reasons, but I love that it's a Lemania-based manual wind movement. The Speedy Reduced comes with an ETA 2894, which is, wholly, which is a wholly different movement. But I just like that, you know, I have nothing against Etta. I love Etta. I've made a video about Etta. But I like that it's a little bit more unique. I mean, this Lemania, not exactly this one, but this design has been used in much higher-end watches like Patek Philippe, Vacheron Constantine, with different levels of finishing, of course. I just love that it's manual wind, there's interaction, and it's a unique movement choice. However, the movement is not perfect. <clears throat> Delrin parts. We'll talk about that in the five things I hate about the Omega Speedmaster. But the 1861 caliber movement, very, very cool, and definitely one of the most unique things about this watch that makes me love it so much. And last but not least is value proposition. Now hear me out, guys, because a lot of guys out there are going to say that I'm crazy. 
Yes, Speedmasters have been shooting up in price recently. A used Speedy in great condition is going to run you closer to about $3,000 than $2,000, which was the case about a year and a half ago, and I actually picked mine up for 1000 even earlier. Um, so yes, they're still climbing. But think about it this way. A premier chronograph by any brand, Breitling with their B0, uh, B01, Rolex with their Daytona, uh, Cartier with their Calibre, I mean, most of these watches run way above 6000 in retail. Breitlings are closer to nine. Uh, the Rolex Daytona's upwards of 12. The Cartier's closer to 10. This at full retail is in the fours. And guys, yes, while these are shooting up in price, this is definitely a value proposition. Do I think the Daytona is $10,000 better than this? Absolutely not. Not a dig at the Daytona, I love it too. I just think you get a lot of watch for your money. However, they are shooting up in price and pre-owned watches uh, aren't heavily discounted compared to retail because of how much in demand they are. But I still think you get a lot of bang per buck. Guys, those are the five things I love about the Omega Speedmaster. But it's not a perfect watch, so stick around for the five things I hate about the Omega Speedmaster. However, I will tell you this, I definitely love it way more than I hate it. So now, the giveaway. Well, first off, guys, let me say thank you so much for letting me hit 30,000 subscribers. It's been about a year, a little more than a year, and it's been a wild ride. Uh, you guys have been with me for the ups and downs, and obviously, I couldn't do it without you. So I really hope you guys are enjoying the content, and it really, really means a lot to me. So today... I've partnered up with a couple of cool companies to give you guys a free watch. You may remember my good friend Rick did a build your own watch Kickstarter and he built me the Federico Tox watches watch uh, with the Miyota movement. And Rick was generous enough to donate me one of these that originally came in a kit. So while it's not a complete watch like this one, I think it's even better. You're gonna get to build your own watch. Check out buildyourownwatch.com for details on the kit. I'll leave a link in the description below. And you're going to get the uh, Federico Tox watches dial with it, which there's only two in existence as far as I know, the one I'm giving away and the one Rick is giving away and, and the one in my personal watch. So you're going to be able to case this watch by yourself. Put the hands on it. Uh, put the movement in the case, close it up, and it comes on a really nice Barton leather band. Now, of course, how can you put this watch together without a toolkit? Well, Rick reached out to Esslinger, esslinger.com. They sell some great accessories for watches, a link in the description below, and they also threw in a watch toolkit. Everything you're going to need, screwdrivers, tweezers, presses, spring bar tools, everything you're going to need to put together your Federico Tox watches watch. Now this is 42 millimeters, it's got a Miyota movement, comes on a Barton band, and it's a pretty cool concept. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not like a super high-end uh, Rolex movement or anything, but it gives you the appreciation of putting together your own watch and just how much work goes into something like this. I mean, I got mine pre-built because trust me, these stubby little fingers or the sausage fingers rather, wouldn't be able to put this together. Now you do have the option of getting it pre-built as well. You're just gonna have to let me know if you prefer the kit with the toolbox, uh, the toolkit, or you'd like it pre-built. Personally, I say built it yourself, it's an experience. Now, how are you gonna be able to win this watch? It's pretty simple. The first thing you're gonna have to do is like this video and of course, subscribe to my channel. That way I know you're a true fan, so like and subscribe. And then lastly, you're gonna go in the description below and follow Delray Watch on Instagram and go to delraywatch.com and enter your email in the subscription feed. Now, once you've liked, subscribed, followed us on Instagram and entered your email, I will pick the winner in 30 days. So remember guys, you have to like this video, subscribe to the channel, head to Delray Watch on Instagram and follow us and fill out your email on delraywatch.com. Pretty simple, should take less than two or three minutes and all the links to the Instagram and to delraywatch.com are in the description below. 30 days, I'll announce the winners. Thank you so much to Rick at Build Your Own Watch and Esslinger for uh, supplying 
uh, you know, the, the watch kit and the toolbox. It really means a lot to me. And guys, go check them out as well. I hope you guys are with me for another 30,000 subscribers, but I won't wait that, long, that much longer to, uh, to do another giveaway. But thank you so much for sticking around, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.